Hello and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of the Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a skill on positivephysics.org under the unit of velocity, unit one, and it's titled graph problems. Now this is not intended to be an initial introduction to graphs. Um, I'm going to link a few videos here, I think about four. Um, if you have some questions on graphs, those are some good ones to go to to get more of the fundamentals. But I'm certainly going to go through the two major types of problems you see in graph problems so you can get a sense of how to do these okay um, so the first kind of problem is a position time graph you'll know it's position time because it has position on the y-axis you'll find both types of graphs have time on the x-axis okay so first thing to recognize is that we're in the positive values i like to say look up in the room you're sitting in picture one wall having a number line on it zeros in the middle positive numbers are on the right negative numbers are on the left you can see we've only got positive numbers here so everything's going to be taking place on the right side of the classroom um, and we see that at time zero this object is starting out at about 14 meters from the center of the room okay and we can see as time goes on, it's getting closer and closer to the center of the room. At 12 seconds, it is at the center of the room. So it starts somewhere over on the right side of the room. And after two seconds, it's a couple feet closer to the center of the room. After four seconds, it's a few feet closer to the center of the room and so forth until we get to 12 seconds when it's at the center of the room. So if it's starting on the right side of the room and it's gonna end up in the center of the room, that means this is traveling to the left, this pet tarantula, okay? Um, describe the tarantula's motion. So it's either going to be increasing in speed, decreasing in speed, or remaining constant. Or it could be at rest. Uh, if it was at rest on a position time graph, we would see a line going straight across. Why does that mean it's rest? Well, it's at position 20. It's still at position 20. It's still at position 20. The whole way off, the whole way across, it's at the same place in the room. And so, therefore, it'd be uh, remain, or at rest. So this would be at rest. Okay, but in this case, we see, uh, and, oh, and so remember that on a position time graph, velocity is the slope. Okay, so you can see here the slope never changes. The slope the whole way is the same. It's a straight line. So that means we have constant speed. Okay, if we saw some sort of a curve like that, we'd have to look, is, is the slope bigger? If it's bigger, that means it's faster. If it's a flatter slope, then it's slower. So this one would be decreasing in speed. And this one would go from a flatter slope, which is slow, to a steeper slope, which is fast. So that would be increasing speed. I'm not sure if there are any of those on this uh, thing. So in this case, it is constant speed because it's a straight line, which means the slope is the same the whole way. And on a position time graph, the slope is the velocity. So now we have to do a couple of calculations. We've got to find the distance traveled and the final speed. Okay, well, distance traveled isn't hard. So uh, to get our distance traveled, we started off at uh, 14 meters. Okay, we could say that's our initial X. And our final X is uh, zero meters. Okay, so typically if we wanted to keep track of negatives, this would be zero minus 14 meters which would give us negative 14 meters. The negative just means it's going left. Okay, so the negative means it's going left. We aren't gonna write that in here. We'll just write it covered 14 meters. It also asks for distance, which is a scalar. And so we wouldn't include the negative. All right, then let's create some space here. Um, we'll erase this part. Uh, and so now we gotta find the final speed. Okay, well, this is accelerating at a constant rate, so we're going to be use, it will use our average equation. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the average speed, which is distance over time. Okay, so that means we're doing distance was 14 meters. 
Okay, let me draw a little line here. And uh, time, how long did it take? Well, it went from zero to 12 seconds. So that means it took 12 seconds. And so if we do 14 meters divided by 12 seconds, we get one, so this equals 1.1. 1 .1. And then you see a whole bunch of sixes repeating. We'll just say 1.67. Oh, I shouldn't draw the repeating if I'm going to round off. Okay, and that would be meters per second. So meters per second. All right, so that's average speed, but we're asked for final speed. Okay, and so in this case, because the speed is constant, whatever the speed is at the beginning is the same as the speed is in the middle, which is the same as the speed at the end, because it all has the same slope. So this average speed is the speed at every moment. Okay, of course, you'll have some different numbers, but uh, just follow that pattern and you are good to go. If it's constant speed, remember the average speed is the same as the initials, the same as the final, they're all the same. All right, let's move on to our second problem, which has to do with um, velocity time graphs. Notice now we've got velocity over here. We've still got time on the x-axis. Uh, we do see a negative velocity here. And excuse me, let's talk about what that means. So remember, if you have a number line on the wall, the positive numbers, like the ones we see here, are on the right side. The negative ones would be over there, okay? Um, and so if this has a negative velocity, that means the distant position is decreasing among the positive numbers or increasing among the negative numbers. This is going to mean left. So anything that has a negative velocity is on the left. Anything on the right, or anything with a positive velocity is moving to the right, okay? Um, so pretty simple, if you see the line down here, it is uh, moving left. If you see it up here, no matter whether it's sloping up, down, straight across, whatever it's doing, then it's moving to the right. Once again, up here, it doesn't matter if it's which way it's sloping. Anything down here below zero is gonna be moving to the left. Okay, let's erase some of those extra lines. All right. So we just said that because the line is down here in the negative part, this one is moving to the left. Describe the tortoise's motion. Well, it starts out, uh, here, here, this is just a general way to think of it. This is the velocity, which is like speed, okay? And so the number here is like what you would see on your speedometer using different units, but don't worry about that. But a big number on a speedometer means you're moving fast. A small number on a speedometer means you're moving slow. So this starts off with 0.6 right here. By the time we get to here, it's at 0.3. Well, three is slower than six, if you see it on your speedometer. And by the time we get to the end, we're not moving at all because the velocity is zero. If your speedometer reads zero, you're not moving. So this started out going the fastest it was ever going and it slowed down to a stop, okay? So it was decreasing in speed or velocity, okay? Uh, I took up way too much room with that. We're gonna need that space for our calculations here. We'll just leave it as decrease. All right, what is the distance traveled? Distance traveled, so we're gonna have to have the average excuse me, we're going to have to have the average velocity. Well, our final velocity is zero. Our initial velocity is 0.6, negative 0.6. So the average is halfway in between there. So the average speed is 0.3. Okay, I left off the negative because the negative was just telling us it was going to the left. Okay, so the speed is just 0.3 meters per second, the average speed, okay? So if we want to get distance, we take our equation, S equals D over T. If we're solving for D, it's already in the numerator. So then we just have to get it by itself. To get rid of the T, we have to multiply. So we get that D, D equals S times T or T times S. Okay, I'll just write it this way equals S times T. If we plug into that, 
S is 0.3 meters per second. T is, well, how much time did it take? We got zero here. It went all the way to 24 seconds. So 24 seconds. Okay. And so if we do that, distance equals 0.3 times 24 seconds, we get 7.2. This seconds canceled with this seconds, we're left with meters. So 7.2 meters. And now we need the final speed. The final speed is actually really easy on this because that's what this graph is telling us. It's telling us the velocity or speed. So final means at the end, so way over here, what's the speed right there? We follow it back to the y-axis, zero. This is stopped, so the final speed is zero. So remember on a velocity time graph, you just read the y-axis when it asks for final speed. Wherever the line ends, if the line ended there, well, that's not a very nice number, but we'd say 0.7. Okay, it would be the final speed. All right, enjoy puzzling them out. Don't forget if you got a little bit confused on some of these, this wasn't meant to be an initial introduction to position time and velocity time graphs. Check out some of the links um, here and uh, keep working hard. If you got questions, put them in the, in the comments below and we'll catch you the next time on the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man.